And Jesus gave them instructions what to do. He said, go and tell a man, such a man, and tell him, I will eat because my time is at hand, which Jesus is getting ready to go to Calvary to die for the sins, your sins and my sins. And this is the Passover that they eat and take every year. We observe the Passover through the Lord's Supper, the giving of the Lord's Supper each time. It reminds us of the Passover. And the outline said, while Matthew speaks of the disciples in general terms, Luke pacifies that Jesus sent Peter and John unto Jerusalem to make the preparation for the Passover meal. And we know the second Sunday is we prepare for the Passover. And their unleavened bread, they have to go and prepare for it. And he told them to take two lambs to the uh, temple where the priest sacrificed it as a burnt offering and then cook it ahead of the gathering. So when he went to prepare, they went and got two lambs and they prepared the Passover. We today, we can uh, bribe, buy the bread, but yet we prepare to take the Lord's Supper on this given Sunday. Although everything is already prepared, we also have to prepare our hearts, our minds, in order to receive the Passover. In order to understand and share in the Passover, we need to acknowledge to God and repent to God of our sins. And we come together and we search our hearts and make sure we are right with God before we partake of the Passover. And the 19 verse said, and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready of the Passover. So this is Jesus' last supper, eating with his disciples because he's on his way to Calvary. Uh, Matthews 26, 20 through 25, Jesus identifies Judas as his betrayer. The 20th verse says, Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. As they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And then, and they was exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? That's just like us. If we hear something and we, we are concerned and we are sorrowful, and it is said to us that we're going to do this, yeah, we want to know, is it, am I going to do that? And this is also what the disciples did. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Although he had not said Judas as of yet, but he said the one who dippeth his hand with me in the dish, it is he who will betray me. The Son of Man, the 24th verse says, the Son of Man goes as it goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. We know what happened to Judas, but Judas was a, a, son, a person of prediction. He was born to portray Jesus. Yes, this is very tragic. This We would say if I had been there, I wouldn't have did it. But we also have to understand Judas did what he had did because he really had to. Jesus had to die, which means somebody had to betray him. And Judas was born for that particular time to do just what Judas did. Very sad because I wouldn't have wanted to be Judas. But we all know Jesus came to die. That was his purpose. He came to save mankind, but also he came to be a living sacrifice for us. He must die 
he had to die. And Judas had to betray him. And it said, the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. It was predicted. It was foretold that Jesus would be betrayed. The 25th verse said, Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, <laughs> is it I? <laughs> he said unto him, Thou hast said. So right then he's saying, Yeah, Judas, it's you. Isn't it amazing how someone is getting ready to do you something and you even ask them, and they would deny, yeah, I did it. I'm going to do it. Look at Judas, master. Now he's calling him master, getting ready to what? Betray him. Master, is it I? He says, you said. In other words, you spoke the truth then. You said it. It is you. But Judas didn't really understand, just like we would not understand when we would ask the question, knowing this is what I'm finna do. Judas knew what he was finna do. And that was to betray the master for 30 pieces of silver. What man would do for a little piece of change? And don't let it surprise you. you some will do that today. The third outline saying Matthew's 26 26 and 30, remembering Jesus' sacrifice for us. Every day we get up, lie down, whatever we do, we need to always remember what Jesus done for us. Remember that he shed his blood for us. So in his saying, this is why we take, partake of the Lord's Supper, to remember what Jesus had done for us. The bread, his body, the wine, his blood. And we partake in the Lord's Supper to remember that he, his body was bruised, broken, and beaten. And it was for us. And he shed his what? His blood all for us. So we need to always remember the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. Matthew 26, 6 to 30 says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my what? My body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which I share for many for the remission of sin. We know without the shedding of blood, there would not be no remission of sin. So no matter what we are doing in our everyday life, we need to always remember what Christ did for us. He made a sacrifice. He was sinless. He did no sin, did no wrong. But it was all because he what? Loved us. And oftentimes we want to look at Judas with a bad eye. Well, Judas was born for that. Jesus came to die. He came to die for the sins of the world, for my sins, for your sin, for our sin. And when we partake of the Lord's Supper as the disciples are partaking of the Passover, he gave them some instruction to do. He told them where to go to prepare the Passover. And now he's saying, remember. Sometimes it's hard. We, we forget sometimes. But the one very important thing that we should not ever forget is that Jesus shed his blood for you and I. And sometimes we have a, a tendency to what? Forget. 
but he's encouraging his disciples. Jesus letting them know I'm, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And no doubt that was sad for him, but nevertheless, Jesus was obedient to the end. He was faithful and obedient. He came to die, and that's what he did. And Judas, just for some money, as they say, what we are do for a little piece of change, he betrayed, betrayed the master. But that betrayal had to happen. Jesus had to die. And Judas was the one picked to betray Jesus. When we look and remember the Lord's Supper, we need to come before him with a clean heart. Asking him for forgiveness, thanking him for what he has done for us. Lord Jesus, you died for my sin, for our sin, for the sins of the world. And yet, there are some sacrifices we seldom want to make. He made the greatest sacrifice of all, but when it comes to us making some sacrifice, guess what? And that was me this morning. Had a headache, sinuses. Oh, did not feel like coming. And I said, Lord Jesus, if you allow me to see tomorrow, I have to get up and go to work. So I said, well, Lord Jesus, the head may be hurting. I may even be tired, but I'm going to push on. We have to remember what Christ did. So when we encounter things, when it is asked of us to make the sacrifices or some sacrifices, remember the sacrifice he made. He died for us. And I didn't want to get out of my bed, but thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That when we remember what Jesus did, we have no problem shining. We have no problem going and doing what is required of us if we just remember what Jesus did for us, that sacrifice. So when it is called, we are called upon to make sacrifice. Or as we go through some things in life, remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And he shared the Lord's Supper with his disciples. We too are his disciples. So on this day, we are doing what? Sharing the Lord's Supper. And we are remembering is what Jesus did. If we can keep in our mind, it's not about us, not about what I have, what I can do. I can't do anything without the power of the Holy Spirit. But when I remember, when I think about the goodness of God and all that he has done for us, our soul should rejoice when we walk into these doors. We should shout with joy because what? This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall, we will rejoice, all because what? Jesus shed his blood on Calvary for you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. We want to thank Sister Brown for coming in and giving the lesson this morning. Like she said, she had a headache and I just laid down. I got about 45 minutes. <laughs> and Mika shook me twice, so I said, I guess I better get on up and get to church. And uh, Sister Brown came on in and helped me out to get the lesson out this morning. She sure do appreciate it. But uh, it was a good lesson, and we know about communion, and uh, it represents everything. You know, they back in the day, the Jews celebrated all year long, you know. The unleavened bread, the tabernacle, and but the Passover was the most important one. That was the most important one. So we know the communion represents the past. Do this in remembrance of me. We know it represents the presence. 
and that's why you have to do that heart check. You know, you got to do that heart check. Ain't no use you taking if your heart ain't right. You know, and it represents the future. You know, we take communion because we know that he's coming back one day. That's why we do communion. That's why it's so important. That's why Passover is so important. And, you know, and you look at things in the Bible, you say, God's master plan is, is, is something else. It's something else because it's just like he don't, he don't miss anything. Kind of like in the military, you know, one of the one of the big things about success in in our wars and things is our logistical. Can we get the stuff that we need to fight with effectively and efficiently? Well, God's got everything already in place. Yeah, you can see today. But master, where we gonna be? I'll just go on down there and see this guy with this little pail and something. He he, it's it's already already set up. He, Somebody gonna betray me. Yeah. Well, we already know back now. He already talked to the folks. He already talked to the folks. You know, even if just just say, even if Jesus didn't know it was him, he told on himself. You know how sometimes we try to figure out if he's talking about me. Is it me? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's you the way you said it. You know, I can look at you and you didn't done something wrong. But remember now, Jesus prayed for these twelve. He prayed everything Jesus done, he prayed for. And when he got through praying, he picked one, two, three, four, you 12, you're going to follow me. For three and a half years, he followed him, and he still betrayed him. That's the same thing with us. Amen. 55, I'm 55 years old. I'm still capable of betraying Jesus. Amen. And that's what we got to look at. We got to stay that's why we got to continue to come to church, continue to pray for one another, continue to, because we can slip. Yeah. You know, 30 pieces of silver, $30,000. Ain't no difference. I ain't got 30 pieces of silver. I ain't got $30,000. All I got to do is turn somebody in for it. Oh, buddy, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. Amen, amen. All right. We're going to move on, keep on moving on into our prayer service. Uh, I don't know, is she here today? It's still early, but we're going to say a prayer out of our Sunday school lesson, then we'll move right on into our prayer service. Amen? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father,
to just bask in the, the wonderfulness of of who you are, God. God, you're such a mighty God. You're such an awesome and amazing God. God, there is nobody like you, God. No one in our lives, God, can do the things that you are able to do, God. Nobody can can move things and orchestrate things in our lives the way that you can. God, when our situations look impossible and look bleak, God, there's nobody but you, God, that can turn it around. God, we think Thank you for just being an awesome God, being a matchless God. God, we thank you for being a merciful God and a gracious God. God, we thank you for your faithfulness, God. Lord, we thank you that even in our our failures, God, and even when we disappoint you, God, when we we don't follow your lead and, and, and stay according to your will, God, we thank you that you still have your hate on us, God, that you're still protecting us and you're still providing for us, God. God, who wouldn't want to serve a God as great and as powerful and mighty as you are? God, even while we're praying right now, you're able to hear our hearts, God. You're able to hear each and every one of our prayers at the same time. So, God, we just thank you. We honor you this morning. We reverence you on this morning, God. God, we thank you for knowing what we need, oh God, for knowing what is best for us, God. God, we thank you for looking ahead, oh God, and just mapping out our lives, God, according to what you know, oh God. We thank you for even protecting us from ourselves.
lift it. We thank you for the prayers that's been prayed. It's preaching time now, and the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. God accept now the meditations of our heart. Accept these words shall be spoken. Open the hearts and minds of your people. We might hear what heaven has to say. We love you because you first loved us. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. And the people said, Amen. Again, we thank God for another day. <laughs> and another opportunity to stand and to proclaim a word on his behalf. We thank God for you ushers. Thank you so much for standing so graciously and serving so well. We thank God for the voices of steeple this morning. Amen. Can we encourage them and clap of praise? Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, and I want to begin reading at verse 14. Matthew chapter 26 and the reading at verse 14. If you have it, say amen. amen. We thank you for standing to honor the reading of God's word. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. You may be seated in the presence of our God. The grass withers, the flowers do fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. Allow me this morning, if you will, to speak on this wise. Uh, betrayed by a friend. Betrayed by a friend. Have you ever been betrayed by someone you trusted? Perhaps they were even a friend. Using words like trust. Betrayal 
and friend in a sentence doesn't paint a comforting picture. And yet in our text this morning, our Savior is betrayed and sold for 30 pieces of silver. Today, when we hear the phrase, uh, it immediately brings to mind a traitor or someone who would sell out a friend. And I believe I'm in good company this morning. When I say this morning, all of us have experienced some moments of betrayal. Where are the folk we trusted? were disloyal and revealed secrets you only shared with them. And watch this. It hurts when it comes from people we don't know. But it hits different from folk we consider friends. Y'all going to help me this morning. Truth is, my brothers and sisters, it's not betrayal unless they are close to you. Otherwise, it's just a lie or a rumor. My brothers and sisters, there is this morning, they could need a plot to kill Jesus. Jesus, because of his miracles and teachings and people believing in him as a result, became a threat and a problem to the religious folks of the day. Can I stop right there for a moment and say parenthetically, you do know you can be religious and not have a relationship. Or oh, y'all gonna help me up in here. You, scripture, scripture reveals to us that the chief priests and elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest and plotted together to arrest Jesus, the Bible says, by stealth. Let me tell you what that word means. That word means that they were trying to use a bait. They were trying to catch him up somehow. And they wanted to kill him. They, they, didn't just, they, didn't just, they wanted to kill him. They, 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 these, watch this. Don't miss this this morning. These were church folks. They, they were not worldly people. The chief priests made up the Jewish council. The elders were leaders in the synagogue who, who helped guide people in the traditions of the religion. I need some more in the monitors. Uh, uh, church folk, church folk, these were church folks. Church folk, people in the church will sometimes betray you. I need to drop this on you. People in the church will sometimes betray you and hurt you quicker than people in the world. I, I hate to paint too much of a pessimistic picture. and I, I don't want you to think that everybody in the church is perfect. We're all in works of progress. I wish I had a way. But, but watch this. Uh, uh, the, it, 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 that don't stop you. It shouldn't stop you from coming to the Lord's house just because everybody ain't right. Don't stop you from going to work every day. There's some folk done pissed you off at work, but you keep on going day after day. You ought to keep on coming to the the house of God. Beloved, don't you make the mistake in believing everybody in the church is saved. The Reverend, Satan shows up Every Sunday, you, you, he, 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 huh. I wish I had a witness here. He shows up every Sunday because some of us bring him with us. Do I have a witness? Ah, uh, the, the, the chief priests and the elders are meeting together to plot a way to secretly arrest and kill Jesus without causing an uproar among the people. 
They said, they said among themselves, not during the feast. It's there in verse 4 of chapter 26. It says, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. One writer says, they feared the people. Jesus says to the disciples, he says, after two days, the Passover is coming. And the Son of Man will be delivered up. To be crucified. Scripture says. Then one of the twelve. Whose name was Judas. Iscariot. Went to the chief priest. And said. What will you give me. If I deliver. Him over to you. My brothers and sisters. Our enemies. Get this, aren't always from without. Most times, they are from within. Many of you can help me preach this morning. If you had the mic by, by, by declaring and agreeing with me, the people who hurt you the most were not strangers. They, they, they were not people you didn't know. Deacon Giles, the people who hurt you the most were those who were close to you. You, you, were, you were Ace Boom Coon. You, you, you were partners. You, she was your BFF. She was your girlfriend. You, you hung out together. You considered him your brother. She was like a sister. You, you thought she was like one of the golden girls. She was tried and true. She was a pal and a confidant. All I'm trying to say is that when you were betrayed, it was more likely that it came from a friend and not someone you didn't know. Another interesting thing uh, for our consideration this morning, Brother Jamal, is that the chief priests and elders, watch this, did not send for Judas or go looking for him. The Bible says he went. <laughs> Is that in your Bible? He, he went to the chief priest. Judas was absolutely aware these individuals were enemies of Jesus. He went to the people he knew were out to get Jesus and he conspires with them on a plan to arrest Jesus. What are you saying, Pastor Dixon? Sister Porter, the folk who are closest to you know who your enemies are. They know who they are. Uh, they, they know who the people are. Uh, who don't care for you. Why? Because you told them. You've had discussions about them. And watch this. I I'm sure the chief priest was shocked. Here is Judas. One of the twelve. This is a man who follows Jesus. He is one of the disciples. He is one of his closest friends. And yet, here he is. And we didn't even send for him. He came to us asking what would we give him if we delivered Jesus over to us. In Mark and Luke, the scripture says, they were glad and promised to give him money. They were glad, Brother Jerry, because if anybody could provide insight and know Jesus' whereabouts, it would be one of his disciples. They had no solution, 
But Judas provides them with a solution. And beloved, you must be careful even with the folks closest to you in letting them know all of your business and the places you visit frequently. Y'all going to help me up in here. Listen, let, me, let me say it this way. Sometimes it's best to go places by yourself. Rather than have folk tagging along, you you ought to be you ought to be get comfortable sometimes with being by yourself. I, sometimes you ought to take yourself out to dinner. I wish I had a witness here. You ain't always gotta have a big crowd around a bow hot a hoopla. Sometimes it's best to go by your. This it, it, girl's unfortunate. And I hate to bust your bubble this morning. But it don't take much for people to betray you. Let, 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 let me talk to somebody on this side. It don't take much for people to betray you. They hand him over. They will hand you over. And they will do it for a little bit of nothing. Scripture says, and they paid him 30 pieces of silver. Now, what's the significance of that, Sister Giles? 30 pieces of silver was the price paid for a slave. I'm trying to help you. Uh, according to Exodus 21 and 32, if an ox gored a slave, male or female, the owner had to give their master 30 shekels of silver and the ox had to be stoned. What do the 30 shekels of silver mean about Jesus? Jesus' life had no apparent value to those who rejected him. The prophet Isaiah expressed this feeling well in Isaiah 53. Isaiah writes, he was despised and rejected by men. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from when men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. People around Jesus who rejected Jesus may not have placed any value on his life, but God did. Did y'all hear what I said? God did. What, what a contrast when we realize that he who lost everything gained all and then turned to give us everything. I said that too fast. I said the one who lost everything gained all and then turned to give us everything. He who was deemed a trifle, a slave, incomplete, worthless, and of no value, won for himself and for us everything. What is everything, Pastor Dixon? It is the value of eternal life in the presence of God. You ought to look at a neighbor and tell a neighbor this morning, I've got eternal life. I, when I accepted him as my savior, he gave me eternal life. I heard my granny say, I got to die one time, but I ain't going to die no more. I wish I had a witness here. One of these old days, I'll be with him eternally. See, see, let me help somebody. Let me, let me help somebody. Uh, says Markham, the people See, see, the reason folk can betray you so easily is because even though they are around you, they hang with you, and you are close. They don't see the value God has placed in you and on your life. They, they, they don't know who you are in Christ. In Christ, I am more than a conqueror. 
I, I thought I'd get some witnesses. In Christ, I am the head and not the tail. They, they don't understand. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. They, they can't understand the concept that all things, yes, even your betrayal, will work out for my good. I wish I had some help. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, I'm more blessed now than I ever been before in my life. Keep on talking about me. Keep on running your mouth for me. Keep on digging ditches and God keeps on blessing me. I've gotten more now than I've ever had before. Watch this, Sister Ruffin. God used betrayal to put me in a position to be blessed. Ah, form your weapons, dig your ditches, scheme with whomever you want to. I'm not worried because I've got God's protection. And he fights for me. Is there anybody in here? No, he'll fight your battle. You, you ain't got to cut nobody's ties. You ain't got to bust out no windows. You ain't got to put no sugar in nobody's tank. You, you ain't got to ride by nobody's house. You ain't got to go checking for nobody. You ain't got a Facebook stalk. God will take care of you. He fights for me. Oh, it matters not what you think of me. You may think I'm worthless and I have no value. But what matters most is what God thinks of me. To God, I'm the apple of his eye. And because he's my father, he has given me everything. I might not be important to you, but I'm more than important to God. Do I have a witness? The King James Version says, uh, they covenanted with him. That, that word means to make to stand. To stand. Do, do you know, sister, sister, sister Cece, do you know some folk will stand with you quicker to do wrong? Than they will to do right. Try standing up for what's right. And you will oftentimes find yourself standing alone. Uh, on the other hand, talk about getting some mess started. And everybody and their mama will join in to help you. you. You know how we Baptists do when we get ready to vote out the pastor. We call Pookie. Ray Ray, Uncle John, Aunt Mary, we call all of them. We call all of them whose name is on the road. But don't come to church because we need your vote to get rid of the pastor. It's the difference in prayer meeting and business meeting. Come, come, say, come for prayer meeting. You can sit anywhere. Don't worry about finding no seat for prayer meeting. Business meeting, you got to pull chairs out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Scripture says in verse 16, and from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Some folks are seeking the right moment 
a fitting time to hand you over. And don't miss this. Don't miss this, Sister Green. Don't miss this. They are watching for your most vulnerable moment to betray you. This is why you can't afford uh, not to go around without the whole armor of God. My granny said, you better watch as well as pray. Watch this. They're watching for your most vulnerable moment. And for Jesus, it was the Garden of Gethsemane. It was the place where Jesus was wrestling with his assignment. His humanness was on display, but also his obedience to the will of the Father. Can't you hear him saying, nevertheless, not my will, but let thy will be done. Judas knew the place. Jesus went there often with the disciples. And Judas knew this would be the perfect time to arrest him away from the people. And the Bible says he betrayed him with a kiss. Can I say right now, don't you get carried away? All these folk kissing on you, telling you. They wish you well, and we congratulate you, and we are so happy. Listen, everybody, they kiss you. Don't mean you well. They could be identifying you. Oh. But I, but I got good news this morning. The Lord wanted me to tell somebody that while they're looking for an opportunity to set you back, God is using it for an opportunity to set you up. Won't he make your enemies your footstool? I, I, I feel all right. Won't he prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies? Judas, not press McLean. What, what made Jesus, what made Judas betray his Lord and Master? What made Judas betray his friends? Was he mad at Jesus for telling them to leave the woman alone? Did he get upset because he was the one making the most fuss about Mary being wasteful by anointing the feet of Jesus with this very expensive ointment. Judas was the one who made a recommendation for the use of the ointment. Scripture reveals it was Judas who said, why was this ointment not sold? For 300 denarii and given to the poor. He said this, watch this, not because he cared for the poor. But because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into. He worked in the finance room. He was in charge of the church's money. <laughs> Say this, you, 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 you better be careful with church money. You need to make sure you dot all the eyes cross all the T's. God don't play. Uh, no, 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 no. God doesn't play about church money. 
care nothing about the poor. He was helping himself. Perhaps the bag was a little low. Judas needed to help himself. Jesus tells them to leave her alone. Why is she being criticized? You, 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 you always, you will always have the poor here with you, but you don't always have me. Always. Maybe, maybe he couldn't get his way. One thing, Sister Hill, I discovered, and this is especially true in the church, is that you will find out a person's motives and spiritual maturity when they don't get their way. Hello, lights. You, 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 you will find out a person's motives and their spiritual maturity when they don't Get, you ever seen folk raise hell in church? It, it, was be, it, it was because somebody didn't go with their recommendation. But brother pastor, I think we ought to. Y'all do it this way. Well, yeah, yeah, that, that, you know, we can, we can talk. But, 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 Pastor, you, 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 you didn't do what I, what I recommend. You, I, you didn't do what I recommended, but Pastor, you, you we, we, we did something else besides what I said do. <laughs> More folk leave churches because they didn't get their way. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Get mad and upset because they did not get, quit acting like children and toddlers and throwing temper tantrums. Grow up and be an adult. So y'all ain't saying nothing. Move on, Pastor Dixon. I'm moving. Uh, Judas, watch this, <laughs> was only concerned about himself and what he could potentially gain from following Jesus. Judas was looking for a return on his investment for giving up his life to follow Jesus. And here Jesus is talking about he's getting ready to die. Maybe Judas betrayed Jesus because he thought he had nothing more to gain by following him. Stay with me. His hopes and dreams of a come up have been dashed. And my brothers and sisters, I need to tell you, there are some folks connected to you to see what they can gain from you. They attach to you not because they are being supportive, but because they're looking for a come up. And once they see they have nothing to gain, they won't have anything else to do with you. How do I know? Have you ever been down on your luck? And you reached out to that one somebody who you knew would come through for you. They looked at the caller ID and declined your call. They, they wouldn't even return your call after you left a message. My brothers and sisters, Matthew does not tell us why Judas betrayed Jesus, but I did find who. I did find who made it. In Luke's account of this pericope of scripture, he writes, then Satan entered. <laughs> then Satan entered in the Judas. We don't know why, but we do know who made Judas betray Jesus. Satan entered him. My brothers and sisters, Satan and sin, get this, will always take you further than you want to go. It, it appears, it appears, Satan used Judas 
to portray Jesus. But beloved, if we look closely and with our spiritual eye, who's really being used? God used Satan so that Jesus' destiny could be fulfilled. I wish y'all take the breaks off, man. I, I, I know, I know, I know Satan is beating you up. It seems like he throws one thing after another at you. You take three steps forward and Satan knocks you four steps back. And you want to know why you can't seem to get ahead. God wanted me to tell you he's using Satan to push you to fulfill your destiny. I know it looks like Satan is, is using your betrayer to wreck your life. But in actuality, God is using Satan to help you fulfill your purpose. You, you see, see, you have to change your perspective. Satan can only do what God allows him to do. Do I have a witness here? You, you never would have left that job and started your own business if they didn't do you wrong and let you go. You didn't realize it then, but God had something greater for you. You never would have gone back to school and got another degree if some doors weren't closed in your face. You never would have stepped out on faith if your faith has never been tried. What God is allowing Satan to do will eventually bless you. who's really being used. Satan couldn't touch any of Job's stuff. Couldn't touch his body without God's permission. What you're going through, and if you're experiencing betrayal, God is using Satan to push you to fulfill your purpose. And I hear the scripture saying, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. I don't care what it looks like. God is going to finish his work in you. The events that unfolded here as I hurry to my close are a fulfillment of the prophecy of what was to come with Jesus' death in Zechariah. Jesus was willing to die a slave's death for the sake of you and me. And Judas fell into the hands of the enemy so that Christ could pay our debt. Jesus knew Judas would betray him. Can I stop right there and say, I'd rather know who my enemy is. If you don't like me, go and tell me you don't like me. Don't, 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 don't try to butter me up. Stroke my ego. Tell me you're my friend. Just go and tell me you don't like me so I don't have to fool with you. Jesus knew Judas would betray him. But don't miss this. Yet he still calls him. And makes Judas one of the twelve. Why? 
because Jesus knew huh, sometimes perpetrators are a part of God's plan. Uh, perpetrators push us to our purpose and aid us in accomplishing God's plan. Jesus tells him to do what you're going to do quickly. Scripture had to be fulfilled. And that's what I want to tell somebody. Don't worry about your enemies. God has a plan for you. And he's going to fulfill his plan. Your enemy is just a part of the process. They can't understand what they meant for evil. God, uh, huh, worked it out for my good. They uh, can't understand uh, that uh, I will uh, let nothing separate me from the love of uh, Christ Jesus. But as I hurry here, I need to tell somebody that uh, not only does God uh, have a plan for you, he, he also uh, has a plan uh, for our enemies. When uh, Judas realized uh, Jesus had been condemned, he changed his mind uh, and tried to give the money back. He said uh, he sinned by betraying uh, innocent blood. Uh, but the chief priests and elders got what they wanted and uh, told Judas, uh, what are you talking about? Uh, and what you now feel uh, has nothing to do with us. Uh, deal with the situation yourself. Uh, scripture says uh, he leaves the money uh, and went to hang himself uh, in the field acquired uh, with the award money. Uh, his body swelled uh, and he burst open uh, and all of his bowels uh, gushed out to the ground. Uh, my brothers and sisters uh, how did Jesus uh, handle betrayal uh, how did he manage uh, his life being considered worthless uh, Paul says uh, he had this mind uh, and we should uh, have the mindset of Christ uh, the Bible says uh, who being in the very nature God uh, did not consider uh, equality with God uh, something to be used uh, to his own advantage. Uh, rather, uh, he made himself nothing uh, by taking the very nature uh, of a servant uh, being made uh, in human likeness uh, and being found uh, in appearance as a man. Uh, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, all oh, shucks, every knee should be 
bow in the heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Is there anybody here who knows one day the Muslim will have to confess the Buddhists will have to confess. Everybody will have to confess that he is Lord. Is there anybody here who knows I thought I was in a Baptist church? Is there anybody here who knows he died one Friday on a hill called Calvary. He died on a cross. Do I have a witness here? He died until the sun, yeah, refused to shine. He died until the earth rocked and reeled. He died until the centurion soldier said, Surely uh, this must be uh, the son uh, of the living God. Uh, is there anybody here uh, know that he died? Uh, he died. Uh, he died. Uh, gave up the ghost uh, and he died. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that dying uh, ain't all it did. Uh, one son the morning. I know it ain't Easter Sunday, but it's still good preaching. One Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. And one of these old days, he's coming back for his church. Will you be ready when it comes? I gotta go. See you later. Thank you for letting me talk to you this morning. But I gotta go. But before I leave, look at a neighbor and tell your neighbor, I don't know what it done for you. I don't know where it brought you from. But there's one thing, one thing I know. Look at them. Tell them there's one thing I know. I know he's all right. Betrayed by a friend. No, it looks like The betrayer is wrecking your world. You do know Satan is our enemy. He's an accuser of the brethren. He is our adversary. And watch this. We got to be honest this morning. Some of the stuff he accuses of us or some of the stuff he goes to God and tells God, we did it. But, but here's, here's, here's where I rejoice. All my sins have been forgiven. See, y'all don't know when to shout, y'all. 
we've gotten so comfortable with, with Jesus that we don't understand. He's covered our sin. in his precious blood and he's washed us. Watch this. The only way God can look at you is through the eyes of Jesus. You, Paul said, oh wretched man that I am. The only way that God can look at us in purity and in holiness is because we've been covered by the blood but what can wash away my sins what can make me whole again nothing but the blood that, that's the only way that's the only way God can deal with us that's why Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life. Nobody gets to the Father but by me. Sister Ruff, he says, I am the door. And if you're here today, the door of the church is open. If you're here today, and you don't have Jesus. Today is a perfect day to accept him into your life. here today and you haven't accepted him as your Lord and Savior you can get up from where you are you can walk this aisle give the preacher your hand give the Lord your heart he'll accept you into this family if you're watching us online inbox us call us let us know what your desire is perhaps you're saved Perhaps you're saved, but you're looking for a church home. We invite you to be a part of this family. We're a loving, growing, building congregation. We love God. We grow people. We build connections. We would love to be your pastor and your brothers and sisters in Christ. If that's you, you can come. You can come. You can come. 
bless you and God keep you is our prayer. We prepare now to receive the Lord's table. Amen and the Lord's supper. we thank you that we have this opportunity take time to pause and reflect on your sacrifice on Calvary we ask now that you would bless this bread 
bless this cup. We thank you for your broken body. And we thank you for your shed blood. Bruised for our transgressions. Wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquity. Chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. We do this. And we do it in remembrance of you. Forgive us now of our sins and trespasses. We don't want to take this bread or eat this cup unworthily. But you said in your word, some have died as a result. God, we want to be right with you and with our brothers and sisters. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We stand all over the building. that he was betrayed he took bread he break it he blessed it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you and they did eat together in the same manner after the same manner he took the cup he blessed it and said, this is my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And they did drink together. Let's drink together. Oh, 
give the Lord some praise. Come on, come on, give God praise. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. It's time to give. It's time to give. And the Lord loves a, he loves a cheerful giver. We ask that you give in that attitude, in that of a cheerful giver. There are multiple ways this morning that you're able to share your gifts and to be obedient in your giving. You can text to give, 318-924-3008. 318-924-3008. You can cash app us, dollar sign, steeplechase BC. If you're watching on our website, there's a Give Now tab. Click that tab, it'll take you to our Easy Tithe login information. You can mail your gift to 7016 Steeplechase Plaza Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71129. You can drop your gift off here at the church. Someone from the finance team will be available to receive your gifts. If you're in the sanctuary, we're giving in a traditional means. Make sure you fill out your envelope so we'll know where to direct your offering. You can drop it in the buckets in the back as you leave the sanctuary. There are love offering envelopes available. Those go to the pastor to support. The pastor, we thank you so very much for sharing your gifts and supporting the ministry. You can cash out the pastor, dollar sign, golden rev, if you choose to bless the pastor that way. Whatever means you decide whether electronically or traditionally, we thank you for your gifts and for you being obedient this morning. Lord, we thank you now for the offering that has been given. Bless the one who gave, the one who wanted to give but had it not. Pray for that one who was even too stubborn to give. We pray that this offering will be used for the benefit that it was given. And now, God, we pray blessings upon your people, financial blessings. Run their cup over. Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessing they don't have room to receive. It is these blessings and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people said amen. 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 Good God bless you and a good God keep you. Don't the deacons look so nice in their, in their blazers and serving? Amen. God bless you deacons. God bless you, deacons. Were you helped by the word today? Were you blessed by the word today? God bless you. God bless you. We're standing all over the building. We're standing all over the building. I wanted, I, I forgot to mention, uh, we, are, we are fastly approaching graduation season. Uh, uh, people graduating from high school and college and, and all of that. Brother Christopher Travis uh, will be graduating uh, from Airline, uh, Airline High School. I believe the date is May 14th, May 14th. Uh, and so we want to support support him. Uh, I've already graduated, got my... my